Hey guys, Mike here from Messi Entertainment. Just doing a video showing off our scripting API that we added in 4.1. So I'm going to jump straight in. If you look at our palettes up here now, to the right hand side we've got IDs for each of them. Uh, and we've also got IDs for each colour. And uh, if we go to the style, you can see that we've got a ID for each style and also for the component. So let's say we wanted to get this component and change some properties in there. We could just go get this, get this, um, get the component virus ID, and then we wouldn't have to search for the names. We can search for the names, but obviously it, uh, it does a lot more work to find to find it. It's matching names, so um, if it, you can imagine what it'd do, it'd loop through all the list of styles, and it, uh, and then when it gets to a style, it's then got to loop through all the uh, components until it finds the one you're looking for. Where if we use the ID, we can just go straight to it. So I'm going to show you the scripting API now. So the scripting API can be found with our documentation. So in 4.1 I added it, a link under Windows UI Styles Web Links Documentation. So you'll see our videos here. Uh, and on the right hand side the documentation. So with our documentation as well, like let's say this editor window, every time it tells you to do uh, you know explaining something, it'll have a video there. And the video just be no voiceover, just a quick video showing you what it's telling you. Right, so let's go to um, let's go to the palette first, and let's get a color. Let's use that as an example. So you'd go script and API. So here's the manual for like the editor and a bit of description there. Script and API is how to create a palette at runtime. So you'll see the overrides here, and you'll have an example script at the bottom right so that's how to create a palette let's get a color from a palette so let's click get color now you'll see we've got two overrides for this one taking a data and an ID the other taking the data the category and register the name so like I said before we want to use the ID um, so what we're going to do is just take this example script and I've got a script in unity already uh, called example script, so I can just paste that in there. If you ever copy it and you got to get all these numbers, what you can do is just double click that so you get the raw text. If you want it back, you can click that. Right, so here we go. We've got our data file, we've got an ID, and we've got an image. So all the images used for in this example is because we're going to change the color of it. So you can see here we've got a button press, so we're going to call this from a button, and then we're going to get the color of the image. And then we're going to go style helper, get color, pass in the data and the ID, so that knows what color. And then you can see that we're going dot color, and that's because you'll see here that we're not actually returning a color, we're returning a palette color. So let's take a look at that. So a palette color, this is what we return, this is the color that we want, but we can also get a name, it needs an ID, it's got a GUID for linking to colors. Um, and a name and stuff, palette name. So this is the color name, this is its parents palette name, which we use for other things. You're probably never gonna use that, but yeah, just know that you're not returning the color, you're returning the palette color. So let's save that and go and try that out. So I'm gonna need a button in my scene. Compiling at the bottom, that's why it's a bit slow. Right, so let's put an image in there as well. And we're going to change the colour of that image with the button. So yeah, so I need to give it a data file, which I'm not sure which one I'm using. So the data files are these, by the way. I'm using that one. And an ID, so let's get a color. So let's go um, red 500. So the ID is six. So we'd expect when we hit that button that the color of that will go red. And it didn't. And that's because on our button we need to call that function. And now we would expect it to change red. 
we go if we get another color let's get blue 500 which is color 56 and there we go right so let's just quickly create a style the same way and then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the style uh, to an object because that's mainly what you're going to use it for so let's go to the script API again let's go style so you can see we've got three overrides here this one here we're never going to use uh, because that'll just create well, what I do is I'll get this example and then stick that in there right so you can see we've got the data file the category the style name and the find by name delete that and we're going to style uh, so this is the class that we're creating and we're giving it a name and usually like you know when you create a game object you like game object new game object or whatever so it's the same here we are just creating a class but we're passing some information in so this data file is going to um, be responsible for adding it to the date this style to that data file it's also going to give it its id and add it to the list and do everything that it needs to do whereas if we if we created it like this then we, we would have to do that you know we would have to go style dot id equals and then this would be the data file dot um, get new style id we would have to do that and we would have to do a few few other things as well so rather than doing that we just pass in the data file when it does all, it, all of that for us and then we can give it the category here the style name and the find by name so let's just do that quickly so this is going to be an empty style there's going to be no components with it get a warning there because it's not actually doing anything but so again we need a data file category default uh, call that I'm the new style and we leave the find by name empty if we leave the find by name empty it'll, it'll give the find by name the same name as the component so we're, we're, we're going to create a new style called I'm the new style You can see it has actually created that and we can't see it yet because this window hasn't refreshed so if we click on that you'll see it refresh so there's our new style it's got no component it's fine by names matching the name of the style because we left it empty right so let's do the same again but this time give it a component as well so if we go to style component that's what a component's called in UI styles it's a style component you can see we've got the overrides again uh, again exactly the same I wouldn't bother using that one because you'd then have to give it all its ID and that you're always going to be best off using the one I show you in the example uh, actually let's not get all of that let's just uh, get this bit so we're creating a style just as we just did but this time afterwards we're creating a component and then uh, this is exactly the same look we could do that but we're going to pass in the data file so that we know what IDs to get it and stuff. And here, if we give it a style, now in some of the overrides we don't actually have to, but if you see this one, we can give it a style ID or a style. Now if we do that, then it's going to automatically add it to that style for us. So that's obviously what we're going to want to do. So we can either give it the style or the style ID. In the background, all that's happening is that. So if you pass in that, all it's doing behind the scenes is that so it doesn't matter whatever one you want to put in there um, then we've got uh, a type to give it so in this case I'm giving it a text so it's going to be a text component this is going to be the name of the component and this is going to be the components path and then you can see underneath what we're doing is we're enabling the color and we're turning the color to red and then we're enabling the font size and we're giving the font size to 30 so what we can expect is going to happen there is we you know just we're changing that to 30 and enabling it we're enabling it that and giving it a color of red what we do is we delete that uh, 
I say this? So, so all that's going to stay the same. We'll just call that the same again, but this time it's going to add a component to it. And there's our component. It's called mining the component. And it's got the red and the size. All right. Right, so now what I'm going to do is just um, get another one that applies it. So if I go style and then go to apply to object, see apply to category is what you're going to want if you're changing layouts. If you're using the categories as layouts like I do in that other example I've done, then you're just going to want to uh, use the category. But in this case, let's say that we have changed the layout. But now we want to apply a style to a new object that we've just instantiated. What we'd do is use these. So let's look at these overrides here. We've got an ID. So these two here are the same, but one's taking an ID, one's taking the name and that. So we're going to want to use the ID. Now this one here is just an object, and these ones down here is taking an array of objects. So if we just obviously if we're instantiating a game object we're just going to want to give it give it the one object but if we pass it in an array of objects now let's say we call this function but that array is empty what it's going to do is going to find them so it's going to do what the editor does so when we click apply here what that does is it, it doesn't it doesn't have the objects referenced it just it just searches all our objects until it finds ones that are assigned to that style and that's how we want it in the editor and that's fine being like that in the editor because we're not struggling for performance in the editor but at runtime we're not going to want to go and find all the objects so we would cache all the objects all right and then and then pass them in that way and then it wouldn't bother finding them so again let's take this example here Uh, so here we've got a data file, we've got an ID of what style to get, and then we've got an object that we're going to apply the style to. And then here we're just style helper. So everything is in the style helper. That's the only class you're going to need. Notice as well we're using UI styles up here. So by using UI styles we can get to the style helper. So what I'm going to do is just load another one that I've got here these ones have already got stuff set up. So I'm create a text, put that down here. So this is from the um, runtime example. So this really should end up up here, all big, all with its color and that. So let's just see what happens. Uh, let's do that with the title. Give it the fine by name. And then with our example script, oh, I did need that button actually, I just deleted it. That button needs to call. Right, so now we, we where's our example script? We're, we're using the ID 8, so we're getting the title style here. Uh, and then what object, so we'll pass that one in. So now we're just going to do it to that. Right, that's because we've got the wrong, so we've got a warning here, the key wasn't um, in the dictionary, and that's because that ID doesn't exist. So perhaps I should give that a better warning actually, but I'll do that before the release. Uh, so now there you go. You can see it's just added the added it to that one object. Now let's say that that didn't have the find by name in. Yet we're still passing it in there. It's still going to check that the find by name is correct. See nothing's happening now because it hasn't got the find by name in it. Alright, so I think that's pretty much covered everything for the scripting API. I mean, you can do everything. If you look down here, you can get a style. You can, If you don't know the ID, you can get the ID, and that will return an integer. 
but a lot of the time you're going to know that anyway so you wouldn't need that and a lot of the time anyway even if you didn't know it chances are you, you'd be better off just looking for the style and then keeping reference to it rather than finding the ID and then finding the style with the ID if you know what I mean um, so th this here the get the get style ID or the get component ID or the get palette ID is used for more if you if you want the ID not the style which in most cases you're never going to want but it's there because it's you know you never know uh, yeah so I think we've covered pretty much everything there like everything you can do in the editor you can do here so if you you know we can duplicate stuff here we can also duplicate things here so if you want to duplicate a style at runtime here's how to do it and there's an example of how to do it so if you're stuck with anything or you need help with anything drop me a message and uh, we'll get it sorted Alright, so cheers for using UI Styles, and I'll see you in the next one.